everybody, this is Kirisha here. Now, this is probably going to be one of my only videos for today. And what I mean by only is, I'm going to try and upload this and another video after this. But, that may not be possible. So, I may just upload after work. Now, with that being said... Let us begin. Yeah. When we last left off, Deku, he just got disarmed. And he was growing his hand. Or well, regrowing it. Now. <sighs> Let us pick up there. Deku, he is, well... He's very exhausted, and this is whenever Toga and some other people would come running up. Deku, he's just slumped up against a tree as people just see him covering his hand. This is whenever they're asking what happened to him, and he would just explain that he's regenerating right now. Now, this is whenever Deku would just ask Roki, How is he? <sighs> How is he doing? Because he just saw, well, a bastard. He would just say that he's doing fine, it's just, as you can clearly tell, he's very frustrated. He never expected to see that guy again, especially here. But since now he knows he's out of prison, he might as well make a few phone calls to see if his family's safe. Now, with that, Taku... He would go to the hospital, and he would basically get his injuries examined. He is cleared of it, as this is when his parents would arrive. Deku, he would explain what happened and what was going on, and the teachers would just say that... <sighs> that is at least very good. It's good that he'll be fine, but there is another problem. Essentially, with everything that's been happening, there's something that's going to happen soon. Plus, they might have to go help All Might soon with, well, with a situation with the two students who got kidnapped. This is going to be very difficult, though. As this will determine exactly what's happening from here on forward. So, if anything does happen, we at least want you to meet one person. Which is when Inko would introduce her father to Deku. As he would walk in. This man is... Well... He looks very muscular, very jaggered. Jaggered, no, I don't believe that's the right word. He looks like he's been living out in the forest for quite a long time. Along with the fact that his beard, it's very dirty, very... Well, it's turning gray, and, well... He does not have a lot of hair. Now, the man has introduced himself, saying that... It's finally nice to meet you, boy. Well, I do believe I... Hmm. I've seen you from pictures, but nothing more. Um. Okay. This is still a bit more confusing. Well. It shouldn't be. I'm your granddad. I used to be a pro when I was younger. So. I'm surprised you haven't heard of me. Called myself Dracula. Oh, I think I remember that now. Or at least heard about it on the internet. Really. So. I do remember hearing that you had a bit more abilities than last time. You mind showing them off? Oh, um. As Deku would just start showing off his new abilities, this man is fairly impressed. And he would quite simply just turn to Inko, saying that it's very impressive. In fact, 
if, he, if her and his thought she had never met, he's not sure what would have happened with Deku. Or what even Deku would turn out to be. Now, with that being said, he'd start going over life, basically explaining how life feeding works and everything about that, along with asking Deku more questions and Deku giving him answers. He has life fed once before, if not twice, but he does not try and do it. But he does get fresher and fresher blood, basically straight out of the human body. No. This is whenever Togo would walk in and the man would see her. He's a bit confused as she would walk over to Deku and, well, basically give him a kiss. Which is whenever the man realizes that this boy is a bit more impressive than he thought. As he can clearly tell by her, well, by the way she looks. She basically has vampire-like abilities, but he's not sure why, as he only knows about their one child. So he just would ask Deku about what happened, and or how he does that. Deku would go over his whole life blood thing, along with the man basically explaining that he may be a perfect vampire, if not a perfect quirk. Along with the fact that he's heard about that little transformation. It would seem that your ability is astounding. <sighs> but do you even know why you have all these abilities? The man would Deku would just shake his head no, and the man would just go on explaining that yes. Certain parts of our family, they were, well, great. During the first generation, we had our first ancestor develop a quirk. His quirk quite simply gave him a small thirst for blood for an increased power. Over time, that eventually developed to, well... He arranged a marriage with another hero, and so on and so forth, down the line, over and over and over again, to try and get more bat-like in blood abilities. And eventually, that is where we all here now, today. So, you're telling me that our ancestor was trying to make a vampire? Not just any vampire boy. The perfect vampire. Which I do believe you are. You're joking me. No, sadly. Your abilities, from what I'm told, from my feeding only a couple times, you may need to do it more and more. In fact, you might actually start need to live feed. Otherwise, you could stay like this forever. Stay like this? Weekend. I know you crave blood. We all do. But you do need to know. Live feeding isn't bad. You just gotta find someone who's willing to do it. In fact, I'm fairly certain... I'm fairly certain a lot of people would help if they could. Along with the fact that... Well, I've heard about your support item, so you don't need to bite directly into their neck. It's so... It works perfectly. Now, that being said, Daku and Toga, they would walk out of the room as Todoroki is visibly, visibly concerned. Daku would just see him and ask what's going on as Todoroki would explain that he called his, well, he tried calling his mom and tried calling the agency and he didn't get any answer. So, he called Fuyuma and, well... She was a bit... She was hysterical. There's footprints of fire everywhere. There's, well... Things are burned and she's missing. Deku, 
he would understand what this means. The League has hostages, so this is not going to be easy. Now, over at the Heroes, they would go on explaining that a student was able to put a tracker. If not, someone was at least able to... Hmm. Yeah, let's say a student was able to put on a tracker. On the Nomu. So... <sighs> they were at least able to find out where one section of them was going. They're going to be in this building. Along with that, we can only assume that the villain's hide is nearby. Now, with that, Deku, he's getting to understand and know his grandfather a little bit more, as over the next four days, he will be training with him. Or at least learning more about those abilities. Now, Deku, he would be sparring with his with his grandfather as the the old man is just chugging nuts and blood. He would go on saying that, you're at least lucky, boy. This trait usually skips a generation. What? As the man would just transform and reveal giant bat-like wings. This trait I got from my own grandfather. But, well, it does skip. So you shouldn't feel all bad. In fact, I think it's part of our dominance. But, well... You just need to get lucky. No. Deku's just watching as... He would just say that he needs to transform, correct? Deku would just take off his shirt and reveal his own giant bat wings. Yeah. For the sake of this, I'm just going to call this old man John, or, well, just something. I need to call him something. John would be ecstatic, finding that this is amazing. So, this form, it's, well, a little more complicated. Mindless and sadistic. Along with the fact that your thirst is amplified. And you go crazy. No. You know the strengths behind it, but do you know the weaknesses? Huh? No. Well, here's one of them. You are blind, but you aren't. You can see like a bat with sonar. And, well, you are weakened to fire. Fire will hurt you. Yes, your body and your skin is tougher, but that heat will burn through quite a bit of your power, if not your regeneration. You're weakened to sound attacks. I didn't figure that already. Ooh. And you're basically just a primal creature just flailing your arms around, looking for its next meal. Do you understand? Y yes, but... Now, you girl... As the man would just point to Toga. I understand your quirk perfectly. So, please come here. As Toga would walk up, and the man would just hold out his wrist. I understand you can copy quirks, so please copy mine for this, well, ability. Now, she would just put a needle into his hand, or arm, wrist, taking some blood and basically copying his quirk. She would immediately just drink it down as she does start copying his own abilities. Finding that his are actually lessened and in fact weaker than Deku's. But that's actually good. Because she's able to keep concentration. Now as that's happening, she would actually copy his own speed, his own strength, and his, well, stamina. As he would, she would tell him, or he would tell her to face off against Deku. With that, they would begin fighting. The man is watching as Toga and Deku are just going back and forth, basically just, well, seemingly just messing around with each other. He would tell them to get serious, as well, they would do so. After that we'll spar little sparring session where Toga eventually just hits Deku in the nose, 
this is whenever he would just say that this is not going to work. Now, you at least need to look, work on as the old man would just reveal his arm. It looks scaly and, in fact, a lot, a little monstrous. You're transforming. Deku would just reveal his own arm like that, but the man can see the differences. As Deku's is more defined and muscular. As the old man's, he's looks a little more hairy. No. Deku would work on transforming, and he would actually show off his in-between form. Now, with that, Deku, he would get a little more accustomed to it, as he's drinking a little bit more, more blood. In fact, going a little more past than his usual intake a day. With that, he would also start being able to advance, if not to try going a little bit further with his vampire form. Now, <sighs> oh. Todoroki and Momo, they are talking and they're still trying to, Todoroki's still trying to figure out what's going on, if not what to do for this. If the League does have his mother, then that's, that's not good at all. Especially with Endeavor, because she may actually relapse and go crazy again. But Momo is just trying to reassure Todoroki that that's not going to happen. And in fact, it should all be fine. Now, All Might would come to Momo as he would just tell her that this is not going to be easy. The challenges up ahead for him may be bad. In fact, if he believes All For One may be alive. And if he is, this is going to mean that the battle, the battle, it may not be fun. But he does at least have allies he trusts. So he should take it, have it a little bit easier this time. Now, with that being said, that is where I'm going to be leaving things off, guys. I do hope you enjoyed the video. And, yes. This is more world building, along with the fact that what I plan on doing for the final battle, it's going to be... Yikes.